Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Wynn, and today's material on silicon photonics is brought to you by work done at the University of Florida's Scan Lab under the supervision of Aslam Khan, Litton Kumar Biswas, and Dr. Navid Asadi. The content of this video will be focused on silicon photonics, also known as SIF, and is outlined by the following topic titles. General overview of silicon photonics, industry and supply chain of silicon photonics, components of silicon photonics, their packaging materials and processes, their fabrication process, photonic electronic integration, their design flow, and will be concluded with photonic integrated circuit, electronic integrated circuit, and overall packaging challenges with the uh, overall challenges with packaging and those integrated circuits. Beginning with an overview of silicon photonics, silicon photonics, SIF for shorthand, are silicon based technologies that utilizes light in the form of photons to process and transmit information instead of electricity, which is what currently electronics utilize. The first half of silicon photonics is silicon, as shown in the left image, and it is a cheap but abundant metalloid that can be easily integrated with current and prior technology, as it is a semiconductor material used fairly very commonly in today's technologies. The second half of silicon photonics are the photonics, which is just a light-based technology that can prove to have faster transmission of data in comparison to electronics, as photons travel much faster at the speed of light than the speed of electrons, which are heavily affected by the medium. And with this improved efficiency and speeds, silicon photonics can be used to improve communications, data processing, quantum computing, and much more. The figure on the right showcases optical fibers, which is one of the mediums where photons travel through for the transmission for photonics. With how ubiquitous electronics are, industries are gearing up to make silicon photonics just as commonly used. Any industry can make use of silicon photonics due to their capabilities. Companies such as Intel in the semiconductor industry are involved with silicon photonics as they are the chip makers and manufacturers of silicon photonics. Companies in the telecommu telecommunications industry, on the other hand, such as Nokia, are experimenting with silicon photonics to help with improving data transmission speeds over long distances, especially for phone calls. Within the aerospace defense industry, uh, Raytheon Technologies are using silicon photonics for sensing and surveillance data movement technologies. While Thor Labs, a leader in the healthcare industry, are using silicon photonics technology to help with their medical imaging devices, such as their optical coherence tomography machines, also known as OCT machines. In the data center industry, Cisco is trying to make use of the improved data transmission speeds for their servers and storage. And in the consumer electronics industry, uh, top player Microsoft is making use of silicon photonics to improve data transmission speeds for virtual reality and or augmented reality purposes. Moving on to supply chain. The silicon photonic supply chain is made up of six categories, as reported by Yol Intelligence in 2022, beginning with the designers of silicon photonics, featuring companies such as HP, Cisco, and Intel, into silicon on insulator substrate manufacturers, moving on to epitaxial wafer manufacturers, then on to foundries, transceiver manufacturers, and then ending with systems. The figure shown on screen displays a non-exhaustive list of companies within these sectors of the silicon photonics supply chain, and it can be denoted by the red borders that companies both North American-based and non-North American-based are dominant players in the production of silicon photonic technology. Moreover, here's another figure depicting a small list of companies involved in the silicon photonics market, more particularly companies within the volume suppliers, prototypers, and R&D sectors of the silicon photonics market. While there are a few highly renowned companies involved in the silicon photonics market, overall, lower profile companies are the main force in advancing and producing silicon photonics. Moving forward to the components of silicon photonics. In silicon photonics, photonic integrated circuits, also known as PICs, have quite the selection of components, ranging from the silicon substrate itself, waveguides, modulators, detectors, optical, optical couplers, lasers, optical fibers, optical ring resonators, and photodiodes, all shown in the figure. 
I'll be going more in depth with some of the more significant components of silicon photonic technology, uh, such as waveguides, modulators, and lasers. Waveguides are a key component of silicon photonics, where they play a critical role in guiding light within the silicon substrate and are usually made up of a material with a higher refractive index than the surrounding medium. Modulators are also a key component of silicon photonics, where modulators allow for the manipulation of light waves to change the properties of light. Optical, optical ring resonators are actually used as a component in designing the modulator itself, where with the incorporation of a material that can change its refractive index, can be turned to create a modulator. In silicon photonics, external and internal lasers are both used to generate light to transmit data. Internal lasers are embedded within the silicon substrate itself, making it easily integrated with other components, but its performance is heavily limited by the quality of the semiconductor materials that they are made from and their thermal diffusivity. External lasers, on the other hand, are separate components that are then coupled to the silicon photonics chips using fiber optics. External lasers provide high quality light at the expense of a higher cost and connection complexity for the system in comparison to internal lasers. Moving on to packaging materials and processes. Packaging for photonic integrated circuits can typically prove to be complex as there are a wide range of packaging technologies required to produce functional modules. As shown in the top figure, the five packaging technologies in silicon photonics are optical, integration, electrical, thermal, and mechanical technologies. Optical packaging technologies are typically focused on the optical fibers and coupling of the fibers. Electrical packaging, on the other hand, is focused on the interposer of the silicon photonic chip. Thermal packaging is focused on the cooling aspects of the chip, while mechanical packaging is focused on the hermetic and non-hermetic packaging for the overall enclosure of the components to protect them against the environment. And finally, integration packaging technologies are focused on the overall hybrid integration of all of the materials and components together, which can also be the most costly, especially when packaging a mix of photonic and electronic technology together. As shown in the right figure, the European Commission established a new pipeline to possibly address the challenges of photonic integrated circuit packaging. Moving on to the fabrication process of silicon photonics. First off, you start off with wafer manufacturing from the silicon substrate. Second step is lithography and etching for waveguides, which is as shown in the first figure up top. The third step is doping with phosphorus and boron. And the step after that is selective epitaxy deposition of germanium, which can be seen on the bottom figure, where a cross-section of germanium is grown on the wafer and is then capped with a dielectric protective layer. And the final step is a back end of line stack formation, where there are six copper layers, and the top layer is, an alumina, is aluminum, which allows for wire bonding or flip chip technology to take place. Moving on to silicon photonics design flow. For the design flow of silicon photonics, as shown in the middle figure, centered, ideally, the design flow starts with a system specification and designs on a progressively detailed level down to the physical layout. Then on is verification and testing where one moves again to the behavioral level. However, it is often needed to switch from a physical to behavioral and back in mid-flow, or even move back to an earlier stage in the flow to perform additional component optimization. The figure on the right showcases a photonic design flow based on an existing electronic design automation, also known as EDA program editors. The top window is the front end, which focuses on the schematics, while the bottom window shows the back end design, which focuses on the layout of the silicon photonics design itself. Silicon photonics allows for the integration of many optical functions on a single chip. However, in a real system, the photonics need to be integrated with electronics into a single circuit to improve the performance of either the photonics or the electronics system. Five approaches that have been explored are wire bonding, interposer, flip chip, 3D stacking, and monolithic front end integration. As shown in the center figure, wire bond integration is where the photonic chip and electronic chip are integrated just through a side-by-side -side wire bonding, as shown in part A. Interposer integration is where the photonic chip and electronic chip are both on top of an interposer, and that's where the integration occurs. Flip chip is where the microbumps of the electronic chip are touching the photonic chip's microbumps thus becoming flip chip or micropillar integration. For 3D stacking, this is where it's very complicated where 
the photon chip and electronic chip are both stacked on top of each other through uh, 3D stacking, which uses through silicon vias to integrate the two. And for monolithic integration, the electronic chip components are integrated within the photonic chip as the base, as opposed to the electronic chip being the base in, as seen in the 3D stacking integration. As seen in the figure on the right, for, conne for connection density out of these integration formats, wire bonding is the worst when it comes to connection density, and monolithic integration is the best. For ease of floor planning, the worst is flip chip, and the best is interposer. For complexity of the design rules, monolithic integration is found to be the most complex, while interposer is found to be the least complex. For ease of schematic driven layout, wire bonding is the worst, and monolithic integration is the best. For reusable photonic electronic cells, uh, both interposer and wire bonding are tied for the worst, while monolithic integration is the best. For complexity of thermal management, 3D stacking has a very complex way of managing its heat, while wire bonding is very simple in that regard. For interconnecting parasitics, wire bonding is the worst, and monolithic integration is the best at it and does not experience it as much. And finally, for complexity of off chip connections, flip chip proves to be the worst, while wire bonding proves to be the best. Now, with all of these rankings in mind, it seems to be that monolithic integration can be the most efficient. However, it is, can be very complex, thus making it difficult to create and also can also drive up the cost quite a bit. Moving on to photonic integrated circuits and electronic integrated circuit challenges. Compared to electronic integrated circuits, photonic integrated circuits have an extra layer of challenges. This can be due to the integration of photonic components, where it can be very complex due to the different materials and manufacturing processes that are involved compared to just using electronic integrated circuits. This can be seen on the right image, where a lot is going into the electronic integrated circuit being integrated with the photonic integrated circuit. Then another challenge that PIC has over EIC is packaging thermal management. Uh, PIC requires specialized packaging due to the size of the components and thus requires more finesse when managing its thermals. And this is very similar for its testing and characterization techniques as well. So photonic integrated circuits relies on optical techniques to characterize it, such as mentioned earlier, OCT. While on the topic of challenges, we move on to packaging challenges for silicon photonic. As mentioned previously, electronic photonic integration is a challenge for silicon photonics as it needs to be stable. And as again mentioned previously, uh, flip chip is a common method. And as shown as a figure on the right, copper pillar bumps, which is also known as TPB, is one of the materials used and methods used for flip chip uh, integration. Another challenge that silicon photonics can um, have are fiber packaging. And so uh, it's such a fiber packaging is a big packaging challenge for silicon photonics as it needs to be very efficient, low cost, and packageable. And this is where edge coupling and graded coupling come into mind. Edge coupling involves bringing the fiber into close proximity with the edge of the laser or other optical device, then using a lens or other means to focus the light onto the fiber. Graded coupling, on the other hand, involves using a grading structure to couple the light from the laser into the fiber. The grading structure is essentially a series of evenly spaced lines etched onto the surface to help diffract the light and direct onto the fiber. Thermal management is also a packaging challenge for silicon photonics, as temperature stabilization is very important. Here is the glossary, or an abbreviation and acronyms of all the terms discussed within this PowerPoint. And here are the references.